Welcome back to the ultimate guide to trading vertical spreads everybody. I'm Chris from projectoption.com and in this video we're going to talk about selecting strike prices when trading credit spreads. Now to quickly recap, the two credit spread strategies of the four vertical spread strategies are the bear call spread and the bull put spread. Now these strategies are called credit spreads because you receive option premium when you enter the trade. So the bear call spread consists of selling a call option and then buying another call option at a higher strike price, while the bull put spread consists of selling a put option and then buying another put option at a lower strike price. So let's talk about the first common method that traders use when trading credit spreads. Now when trading credit spreads, it's very common for traders to sell an out of the money spread. Now that means you're going to sell an out of the money option and then buy a further out of the money option to complete your credit spread. So when you think about credit spreads, you're generally going to think about out of the money spreads. Now the reason traders use this structure so often is because the spread is entirely out of the money from the start. And that means the position can reach the maximum profit potential if the stock price doesn't move significantly against the spread. So if you sell an out of the money spread and the stock price kind of just stays in the same spot as time passes, that spread's value is going to decrease as time passes and that's going to generate profits for the trader. So the benefit of selling an out of the money spread is that you don't need anything to happen except for the passage of time in order to profit on that trade. So to show you what I mean by this, let's go ahead and hop over to the trading platform and look at a live example of a credit spread structured in this manner. All right, so for this credit spread strike price selection example, we're going to look at Apple options. So right now, Apple is trading for $158.40. So let's go ahead and look at a bull put spread and bear call spread example on Apple. So let's say a trader thinks Apple will stay above $150 through expiration in let's say around 40 days. Now let's go to the simulated trades and see what we could come up with. So as of now, the September expiration cycle has 44 days to expiration. And as we've said, the trader thinks the stock price will stay above $150 through expiration in 44 days. So that means we're gonna start by selling the 150 put. Now that's because when you sell a 150 put, you want the stock price to stay above $150 through expiration. But to create our credit spread and to limit the risk of this position, we're also gonna buy a further out of the money put against it. So for this example, let's just go ahead and say the trader's gonna buy the 145 put. So this particular credit spread is trading for 79 cents and let's just lock that in at 80 cents. So let's go ahead and look at the risk profile of this position. So as of now, Apple is right around $158.15. And as we can see, the trader is selling the 150, 145 put spread. And clearly, if the stock price stays above $150 through expiration, the trader is going to make $80 per spread, as we can see in the lower left-hand corner. Now that's because if Apple stays above both of these put strikes, then both of these put options will expire worthless at expiration and this spread will be worth zero dollars. Now if you sell an option for 80 cents or sell a spread for 80 cents and it expires worthless, you're gonna make $80 per spread. So this is highlighting why this is such a common structure for credit spreads. And that's because if you sell an out of the money spread, the stock price doesn't have to move for you to make money. So right now Apple is trading for $158 which is this current line right here. So as time passes, we can see that that pink line is actually going to approach the blue line, and that, just, that is just demonstrating the time decay of these options as time passes. So the benefit of selling an out-of-the-money credit spread is that if the stock price remains at the current price through expiration, you're going to make the full profit on your spread. Now, as we can see here, this, the stock price can actually decrease against the position and the spread can still be profitable at expiration. But if the stock price plummets and is below $145 at expiration, the trader will lose $420 per spread. So let's go ahead and look at a bear call spread example using a similar structure. So let's say the trader thinks Apple will remain below 165 through expiration in 44 days. Well, then they'd sell the 165 call, and just to make it a $5 wide call spread, 
will buy the 170 call. And as we can see, this spread is similarly priced to the 150, 145 put spread. So let's just lock this in at 85 cents. Now, as we can see, Apple is at $158. And clearly, if the stock price stays below $165 through expiration, the 165, 170 bear call spread will expire worthless and the trader will keep the 85 cent premium that they collected initially. And that means they're gonna make $85 per spread that they sell. Now, as we can see, the stock price can actually increase a little bit against us. And let's say the stock price is at $163.50 at expiration. The spread is still gonna expire worthless and the trader will still keep their premium. So the benefit of selling a out of the money spread, again, is that the stock price can stay flat or move against you slightly, and you can still make money on the position. So now that we've looked at selling an out of the money spread, let's go ahead and look at the second method of selecting strike prices when trading credit spreads. All right, well now that we've covered the first way of structuring a credit spread, let's talk about the more aggressive way of trading credit spreads. Now the second and more aggressive credit spread approach is to sell an at the money option and buy an out of the money option against it. So this is sometimes referred to as selling an at the money spread. Now this credit spread structure is much more aggressive directionally because the stock price cannot move against you that much or at all. However, the trader will have a much more favorable risk to reward profile compared to selling an out of the money spread. Now to make sure you fully understand this, let's again hop over to the trading platform and compare the two structures side by side so that you can know the major differences between selling an at the money and out of the money spread. All right, so we've just talked about selling out of the money spreads. Now let's talk about this second method of selling an at the money spread. So to sell an at the money spread, we're going to sell an at the money option and then buy an out of the money option against it to complete our credit spread. Now let's try to look at something like this in Apple. So right now Apple is trading right around $158, but as we can see, we don't have a strike price of $158 or even $157.5. So in a situation like this, the $155 or $160 strike could be considered at the money. Now just to compare, let's go ahead and queue up the $165, $170 call spread that we looked at before but then also look at this 160, 165 call spread. So let's go ahead and look at the risk profile. So this is the 160, 165 call spread, and let's just say that this is sold for $1.75. So as we can see here, there's not much room for the stock price to increase against this call spread because the stock price is only $2 below the short call strike price of 160. So as we said before, this is a much more aggressive credit spread structure because you're basically saying that you don't think the stock price is going to go anywhere other than in favor of your spread. So in the case of selling a call spread, if you sell an at the money call spread, you're basically saying you think the stock price is either going to stay right here or decrease from the current price. Now when you sell an out of the money spread, you're being less aggressive with your directional assumption because as we can see here in the case of the 165 170 call spread, the stock price can increase a little bit against the spread and we can still make money. So what's the difference between these two spreads? Why wouldn't you always just sell the further out of the money spread? And the answer is, look at the prices of these spreads. These are both $5 wide call spreads. Now this 165, 170 call spread is further out of the money and it's trading 75 cents cheaper than the further or the at the money 160, 165 call spread. So with a sale price of $1, the maximum profit we can make is $100, as we can see on the lower left-hand corner. So as long as the stock price is below $165 at expiration, the spread will expire worthless, and the trader in this case will make $100 per spread. However, if Apple shoots up and is above $170 at expiration, the trader will lose $400 per spread, and that's because if you sell a $5 wide spread for $1, and the spread's price goes to $5, then you effectively lose $4 per spread, which equates to $400 in actual losses. Now, if you did the more aggressive spread and sold it for $1.75, that means that you can make as much as $175 in the trade, but since you sold it for a higher price and it's $5 wide, 
you can only lose $325. So when comparing an at the money or out of the money spread, when you sell an out of the money spread, you're gonna have more risk relative to your reward. And that's what we can see right here. So with the 165, 170, we can make $100, but we can lose $400. But if you sell a more aggressive at the money spread, you're gonna have less risk relative to the reward. So in this example, we have $75 more in profit potential and $75 less in loss potential compared to the out of the money call spread. All right, so now that you know the difference between selling at the money and out of the money spreads in terms of risk to reward, how do you actually go about placing that short strike? So the first step to selecting strike prices when you're trading credit spreads is you have to place the short strike. So in other words, where do you think the stock price is not going to be by the time the position expires? So let's say you're gonna sell a call spread. So for this example, let's use Netflix. So one approach that a lot of traders might use is using a technical approach. So as we can see here, Netflix is had just recently had a high of around 191.50. So let's say the trader believes that that is going to be some resistance going forward and they want to sell a call spread with a short strike above that resistance point because they think Netflix will stay below this point through the expiration of that spread. Well, since the point of resistance is 191.50, then we know we want a short strike for our call to be above 191.50. So if we go into the options, let's go to September options with 44 days to go, and let's see what we can come up with. So as we can see here, these are strike prices in five point increments. So that 190 strike is not necessarily above that resistance point that we're targeting. So maybe we choose the 195 strike. Now from there, we have to buy a call against this short call to create our credit spread. But how do we know which call to buy? Well, that comes down to risk and reward. So if we just did a $5 wide spread, then we could sell the 195 200 call spread for 80 cents. However, if we instead purchase the 205 call, we'd collect a little bit more credit, but we'd have more overall risk. So in this case, we're selling a 10 point wide spread for you know, right around $1.30, which means our maximum loss potential on this position is $8.70 or $870 per spread. So the first step is coming up with a point in which you believe the stock price will not exceed by expiration. Place your short strike a little bit beyond that and then choose your long strike based on your risk to reward profile that you're targeting. Now another way you could, you could select your strikes is by using Delta. Now this is a more probabilistic way of choosing strike prices. So as we can see, the delta is you know decreasing as you go further out of money for calls and it decreases as you get further out of the money for puts. Now that's because delta somewhat estimates the probability that the option will expire in the money, or in other words, the probability of the stock being beyond that strike at expiration. So really quickly, a 16 delta option is said to be one standard deviation away from the stock price. So if we wanted to sell a one standard deviation call in Netflix, then we would sell the 200 call and maybe we buy the 205 call. Now what if we did the same thing on the other side? We could sell the 160 put and buy the 155 put and now we have a one standard deviation iron condor in Netflix for around a dollar. So this is just a really quick way of showing you how you can go about choosing strike prices, but in the end, it's all about where you think the stock price will be through the expiration of the options that you choose, and then also, what is your risk risk tolerance? So if you have a high tolerance for risk and you want a high probability of success, then you can sell far out of the money options because you know that you know, you're gonna, when selling far out of the money spreads, you're gonna have more risk relative to your reward. However, if you have a little bit of a lower risk tolerance, then you know you're going to want to trade narrower spreads, first of all, but maybe you sell spreads that are closer to the money because you know you're going to have less risk relative to your reward. All right, well, I hope that helped. Now, to quickly recap, when trading credit spreads, it's very common to sell an out-of-the-money option and buy a further out-of-the-money option to complete your credit spread. Now this type of setup allows the strategy to profit even if the stock price moves against your position slightly. 
However, selling further out of the money spreads results in more risk relative to the reward as the probability of success is much higher than selling in at the money spread. Now, as you've learned, a more aggressive way to trade a credit spread is to sell in at the money spread. And that means you're going to sell in at the money option and buy in out of the money option against it. Now, this type of setup doesn't allow the stock price as much room to move against you, but the trade will have more reward and less risk. So that's, that means it's going to be a lower probability trade. Now, that lower probability stems from the fact that the stock price doesn't have as much room to move against you, but with that, you're going to have more reward and less risk compared to selling an out-of-money spread. All right, so in the final video of this series, we'll discuss when to potentially take profits and losses when trading vertical spreads. I'll see you there, and please drop a comment down below if you have any questions, and don't forget to subscribe.